Hey friends, uh, Tim here from ABA Tech Software Quality Assurance. I uh, just want to kind of share something real quick with you guys tonight uh, concerning quality assurance and the whole software industry. Uh, as you might know, if you're in the field, you're in the industry, uh, there's a lot of talk going on around a lot of topics these days, a lot of hot topics, a lot of hot trends. Uh, one of them is agile and the software development uh, life cycle and the new methodology. Um, there are a lot of other trends as far as different uh, kind of technologies out there, Internet of Things, uh, cloud-based testing. So there's just always a lot of variation of, of industry um, trends and hot topics going on. Um, but in all these different topics, there's a topic today uh, that's one of the hottest out there, and that has to do with automation. You know, I've been in quality assurance for the last 10 years, and when I came in, automation was still very at its infant stages, although uh, automation has been done because at that time, Windrunner was one of the big players in the quality assurance space at the time because they had the um, Mercury Windrunner, which was written in the TSL, the Test and Scripting Language. They also at the time had the uh, Mercury QTP, which was a quality test professional tool. At the same time, they also had the Mercury QC, which was quality center. Uh, but over time, uh, things have been involved and other players came in, both uh, proprietary uh, commercial tools and more open source tools came out. Eventually, um, uh, Mercury actually got acquired by Hewlett Packard HP. Uh, so just want to give a little background there as far as uh, the automated space uh, as far as common, as far as different technologies and tools out there. Now, um, speaking of tools, uh, they, I don't think there's a job you can look at these days and you will not find a slew of automation and technical skills needed. So um, I know a couple of years ago um, when uh, I was looking, I was getting back into the job field because I took about a year off to work on some other things uh, personally. And when I was getting back in, I noticed there are quite a bit of automation jobs out there. I've been talking to a lot of recruiters. They were, a lot of requirements were on automation and being having the need to automate. So I, I, I felt and I saw the need to uh, definitely make sure I was on top of things when it came to automation and the technical skills that every quality assurance uh, engineers, you know, but long story short, I was able to get a job, get back in the field uh, with a top organization right now. So I'm glad about that. Uh, but I guess what I want to do now is I want to kind of help people out there that perhaps are looking to get a quality assurance or at the same time, help those ones that are probably already in quality assurance. And they're kind of struggling because they want a career change, maybe a little more money, or perhaps you're actually just trying to get a quality assurance or you're, you're a manual tester. And now you want to get into the automation realm. Just want to let you know uh, about a couple of tools uh, three main categories, I should say, that you want to be aware of and you want to begin to study and uh, kind of read up on and actually begin to, you know, get into some kind of a test lab and begin to learn as quickly as you can so you can be the most marketable uh, QA candidate out there and kind of really uh, uh, keep keep uh, keep on top of your uh, career as a very sharp professional. Uh, so when we're talking about quality assurance and the automated tools, at least from my perspective, uh, again, I've been in industry for over 10 years. I'm certified in industry also. Uh, that's a personal choice. Um, I, I would like to look at automation from uh, a perspective or a point of view from uh, categories or uh, let's say different uh, sections. Because a lot of times you can get caught up in this tool and that tool. Uh, but as you might know, if you've been in this for a while, a lot of these tools come and go through them. They're open source. And uh, after a while, they might do it a lot. The support is not that good, but there's always a good, healthy community. Some might eventually uh, might be commercial tools, might be proprietary, eventually probably get acquired by another organization, uh, like in the case of HP and uh, Mercury. So what was like, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it was always good to kind of keep them in the uh, perspective of um, different tools and the category. So if I had to mention the three main categories of tools that every tester should be aware of, this kind of keep you very well rounded. Uh, I will start with these three. Uh, and I'm going to give an example of each, uh, maybe perhaps vendor and tools they can probably do a little more research on your own and kind of uh, get up to speed on that. One I'll mention, one uh, that I'll first mention as far as um, testing tools out there, as far as automation tools, uh, you always want to look at uh, one category is the test management category. So you're talking about uh, managing the end-to-end -end process from the beginning of the perhaps the software development lifecycle all the way to the initiation state. So you're tracking not only those requirements using some kind of RTM, which is a requirement traceability metrics, to make sure each requirement is properly tracked down to each test case and eventually can automate that. Also track the bugs, the defects, and all the way to the end of uh, their test cycle. 
Uh, so that's one category is the test management tools and one great test management tool out there in the space. There are a lot of them out there. I'm just going to share a, a couple tonight. One of the major players out there, yes, it is a commercial tool. It is proprietary by HP, and that's the uh, HPQC, the ALM, the Hewlett Packard um, Quality Center. Um, so what I'll suggest for every quality, uh, quality assurance engineer professional out there is at least be up to speed with it. Uh, be familiar with the product, be able to talk about it, know about the latest version, uh, at least have some kind of uh, working knowledge. So if you're talking to a recruiter or you're talking to a firm or hire manager, you can at least say, oh, yeah, you're familiar with Quality Center um, Professional, HBQC, and you're also familiar with what it does and the different variety and uh, that the product has to offer. So the first category I'll say, like I mentioned, is the HPQC uh, tool within the test management category. Uh, the next category I, I will talk about here has to do with your defect management tool, tools. Now, um, yes, as far as defect tracking tools, yes, some defect tracking capabilities can be housed within your test management tool. For instance, in this case, HPQC, it does have defect management uh, um, capabilities and features where defects can be tracked all the way from when the defect is created through when it's, uh, the bug has been worked on by the developers and you go back and retest the regression test and close that bug out. So yeah, that's great. But also there are other variety of other tools out there that actually are housed and specifically designed for defect management process. And one of them is Bugzilla that is out there. So I recommend every tester know about Bugzilla as a tool. Another one is a tool by, by name of Jira. J-I-R-A helps with the actual uh, uh, pro, uh, entire um, life cycle of bugs. Although Jira can be used for a number of of other um, functionality from agile methodologies to the sprint cycles and things of that nature uh, as far as versioning and um, uh, uh, where uh, developers use that tool uh, quite a bit there as far as ticketing system. So, uh, but as far as defect management tool, uh, Bugzilla is a big one in the space. I recommend you be familiar with Bugzilla. I also recommend that you're familiar with Jira as a tool also because a lot of organizations are moving towards Jira uh, as a tool as far as uh, a lot of their projects are concerned as far as managing a lot of their projects. Um, as a, uh, as a uh, software shop. So be familiar with those tools right there. So we mentioned software, uh, excuse me, we mentioned test management tools, HPQC. We've also mentioned defect management tools, uh, in this case, Jira and Bugzilla. Now, the third and final one we're going to mention today as far as uh, three uh, automated testing tools are concerned. Again, we're looking at them as categories, but we're also giving you names because a lot of times these vendors can change, come and go, but also but the categories are still there. There's always going to be a new player in this space, so there's going to be an old player that's been around for a while. So at least being able to talk to these categories, I'll always give you a leg up and I feel makes you a little more knowledgeable about your space as a professional uh, quality assurance engineer. So the third and final category I will uh, share with you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this evening is that of your web testing tools. So we're talking about web testing tools. How can we automate the process on testing web applications or front-end applications, especially when you have a lot of regression case scenarios that you don't have to go through that methodical process, testing them manually. There are a number of uh, actual great automated testing tools that are specifically designed uh, for uh, web application. One of them out there, the biggest and the hottest one out there today, um, out there, of course, there are many other tools, but I believe the hottest one out there today is Selenium. Most of you guys have heard of Selenium. Uh, you have the Selenium, when it initially came out, was the Selenium, uh, different names have get, been given to it, was initially this uh, Selenium IDE, where you can actually do a record and playback functionality. There's also the Selenium web driver, where you can actually use a variety of bindings, uh, or, or, in other words, uh, uh, programming language, uh, Java, Python, uh, Ruby, uh, also uh, C Sharp, as a way to actually uh, create and script or program commands that can be sent to the web driver uh, over APIs and eventually uh, sent over to the uh, actual web page itself to kind of automate the web browser. Uh, and again, uh, Selenium as a package is an open source tool. Uh, in other words, what that means is that it's a free application. So you can actually go to Selenium's website, download the tool, begin to practice uh, practice it. Uh, there's an organization out there called Soul Source Labs where they offer um, all over the cloud uh, uh, test labs, we can actually go out there and play with the application. Um, again, the great thing about Selenium also as a tool is that uh, Selenium as a whole can actually, it actually comes prepackaged or with Firefox and one of the browsers. We can also, of course, the other a variety of browsers you can actually add to that and install once you begin to work with the program. So I will definitely mention uh, Selenium as one of the hottest tools out there uh, as far as uh, web application automation is concerned. Of course, you also have your commercial proprietary tools. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, Hewlett Packard has their UFT 
or QTP, UFT, as in uh, the Unified Function of Testing, uh, you pack a product for also testing front application, front end applications, uh, web applications, uh, and a variety of those uh, uh, tools from an automation standpoint. So again, just wanted to, you know, spend a couple of minutes today just share uh, on a couple of a uh, variety of different automation tools uh, that are out there that can be used to kind of automate your process as an organization. And perhaps next time when we meet, we're actually going to discuss uh, uh, the advantages and perhaps some disadvantages of automation. Uh, should everything be automated? Why should they and why should they not? So uh, if you're interested in more uh, information uh, about automated testing or perhaps manual testing or perhaps uh, just the end-to-end -end process when it comes to quality assurance and actually getting into the field, or if you have any questions, because we're here to kind of help a lot of people kind of empower guys, uh, 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 men and women, uh, to actually get in the actual quality assurance space. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, comments, uh, please visit www.facebook.com forward slash uh, ABA Tech Software QA. Uh, you're gonna, if you look in the comments of this particular video, you're actually going to see the actual link there. Just feel free. We want to have a web presence, kind of get out there and help a lot of people as much as possible. And also, if you are, uh, there's anything that your video you like, uh, maybe you didn't like or you didn't agree with or you do agree with, any comments, suggestions, we're always, we're always open for feedback and can grow. Uh, so as an organization, so feel free, uh, leave any comments or question. Again, my name is Tim, checking out, and we're here to continue to serve you. All right, peace, God bless, and stay up.